Hello and welcome back to The Daily Word. Today we're going to be looking at Matthew 27 verses 32 through 66. 32 through 66. And this is the very crucifixion of Christ. And like yesterday, as we looked at the previous verses, it would be totally appropriate to focus all of our attention on Jesus Christ and the work that he's accomplishing here. This is the work that John would write about as in love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation or the completely satisfying payment um, for our sins. Oh, this is the work of Christ on the cross and then in his resurrection. And so we do rightly want to focus there and give our attention to it. This is our king. This is our Lord nailed to a cross. Um, and let's not miss the utter grace that is at work here. For the unbeliever, I pray this moment is one for you to just reflect on the work of Jesus Christ. And, and, and that work on the cross, really where he, he poured out his life as a gift offering for many. And so I pray that you are drawn by him today uh, to this truth, absolutely. As you just think about the infinite gap between our unholiness, all of our unholiness, believer and unbeliever, and that of a holy God, that Jesus filled that infinite gap that exists, and he did it in love and submission to his Father. And so, so yeah, absolutely a passage to take us there and really reflect on the work he did in his death. Um, and for the believer, I absolutely pray this is motivation for your walk with Christ, that you see your life as a living sacrifice now because of his sacrifice for you, that, that you are pursuing that upward call toward Christ, that you are motivated by his love and grace on the cross, that, that we never trample or tread on his grace, that as believers we're, we're just simply given to, to never, ever, lay that cross down, if you will, on the ground to get to our sin and tread back and forth across our suffering Savior. Let that be an image today that now in love we want to turn. We want to turn to him in obedience. We want to turn to him in love. And we want to just pursue him and pursue his righteousness. And he'll give it he'll be faithful to give it. And so it's, it's a beautiful place to see all of those truths unfold as he sacrifices himself for us. Um, but kind of like yesterday, I'm, I'm going to take us a, a different direction just for a moment. And that's to look at another aspect of the story, um, something that continues to happen today. People are still seeking after signs, right? We see that all through the so-called church today, not just in America, but across the globe, uh, that people are radically seeking for signs still today. Their hope and their ridicule was placed around the miracles and signs Jesus had pre previously done when we think of the, the people in this passage. And so we're gonna take a look at how that was playing out then and how it's still playing out today. Verse 40, Matthew 27, verse 40. We see them crying out, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. Then again, in the next verses, 41 and 42, in the same way, the leaders were mocking and saying, come down. And in verse, verse 42, rather, they add, if you do this, we will believe. Right? Still seeking after signs. Verse 49, again, looking for a sign that Elijah would come and save him. Um, now, remember, when I said their hope and ridicule was placed around the signs and miracles of Jesus, well, that's still going on today. Number one, let's do this kind of as an outline. Number one, false hope. False hope. False hope can be found when we seek for a sign, but ignore the very sign of grace and pardon accomplished on the cross. And we see that in the text, and we see that today that the very work of Christ on the cross is largely ignored when people are seeking after signs and wonders. Many false theologies and religions take this path, many today. 
Think of word of faith, prosperity, and other charismatic teachings often or, or nearly always tend to go this direction. That seeing signs is necessary for your faith and that doing signs is a testing of your faith. So, so get that again, that seeing signs is necessary for your faith while doing some signs, being able to do signs, is a testing of your faith. Now, there are genuine believers who teach signs continue today, something we know as continuationism, contrasted by cessationism, the belief that signs and wonders occurred for the authentication of Christ's earthly ministry, his power and authority during a particular point of time. But the abuse of signs and wonders as having to do with salvation is false hope and false teaching. So number one, it produces false hope. But then we also see ridicule itself. Ridicule itself. Ridicule is found elsewhere in the world. This occurs in hardened unbelief. Okay, now we're talking about people that just ridicule. Ridicule the Bible. Ridicule any talk of Christ at all. Atheists, agnostics, and even areas of progressive Christianity, quote-unquote Christianity, ridicule the supernatural workings of Jesus Christ. Remember, the greatest sign of all time was the effective work of Christ on the cross and his resurrection. When this is ridiculed, you have a false teaching, or really an anti-gospel, an anti-gospel. Now, Jesus himself had tackled this issue previously in Matthew 12, verses 38 and 39, where we read, Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he, Jesus, answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. That sign was the power of regeneration in Nineveh, the power only God can wield, the, the power of regeneration itself. And Jesus did this again in Matthew 16, 1 through 4. So we, we see almost the same, same picture in Matthew 16. So as we think of the gospel, be refreshed that Christ has accomplished his Father's will on the cross. And when we think of this passage in particular, Jesus accomplished his Father's will perfectly, and that his Father's will was also to save those he chose in mercy and grace. If you're lost in that false hope today, if that's your story, is seeking for signs, or if you find yourself ridiculing the idea of Christ and his supernatural power to save on the cross, we would love to have a conversation, talk about that with you. So, um, as yesterday, I called you to please feel free to comment, reach out, use our website, RedeemerAZ.org. Um, but we would love to come alongside and just talk about the beautiful work of Christ on the cross in this passage and his, his resurrection and what it accomplished. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful truth, and it's the most powerful thing we could ever share with you. So hope you're blessed by today's time, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.